y'all might notice that I have a purple tint and that's because I am currently into the greenhouse I'm gonna turn this around so you can see how we uh, for those who haven't seen yeah Rakia we got to move all this stuff because this stuff is all gonna get wet some stuff she putting away by the sub pump and I just it's it, basements flood here so much I got we got to move that stuff but she's been down here cleaning but anyways yeah so in any case um she started some cat grass a few days ago and look at it go we've got um echinacea we're starting here catnip garlic chives um basil starting this is some really dark basil that we've started it's a purple basil and then of course sweet basil's coming up the oregano not so much marjams coming up thyme's coming up echinacea's peeking out right there so um and then some of our more slow growing things sage lavender parsley we're about to plant some rue down here I, don't, I think this is stuff that we're staging, but we got some black-eyed Susan seeds because I'm going to put those around my mailbox. I think those are cute. We got some broadleaf sage and a whole bunch of other seeds that we're working on getting ready to get ready for the summer season. So, anyways, hey. I just wanted to show you the, our, the little beginnings of our uh, greenhouse. But this is how it's set up here just in our... Uh, laundry room up to another light here in our basement so we have I wanted this I specifically asked for this we have these on a Bluetooth timer where we can control the lights from upstairs and we're gonna put another grow light in here for the other side um, this is where we keep all of our joyful packing materials for the business but hopefully this whole countertop and most of its contents will be going to our new store and so will this this is an overflow cabinet and now we've gotten so many herbs and roots that even the overflow cabinet doesn't hold them anymore so yeah this is the laundry room if y'all have never seen it before yeah so anyways this is that part and so this is my lab over here so we have our master gardener tiffany's over here knocked out in the papa's on because she did some furniture construction say hey kia the babies one of the cats <laughs> and i am over here making uh yeah well this is um a fa uh, in the in the um in the greenhouse possibly but by that time all that stuff will be out in the garden but we're we're moving all of this we're gonna uh do a little rehab to this stand this is going to the store so all of this stuff here is going to the store all of it and um, I'm over here right now, I'm dying blocks. So I, what I do is I pre-dye different blocks of wax for our hand poured candles and I'm making candles for clients, hand poured seven days. And uh, then we pre-dye the wax that's left over so that we can pop it in, melt it in and make candles. So that's what I'm doing down here today. Got a black power candle going over here. So every so often as the candle begins to harden i uh fix it with a little bit more root so this one here i already put stuff in here so it's that's probably going to sit there but it's going to need a second pour so those roots are going to go further down um the same thing with this one so we started this one and you can actually when the candles are still um and that's one of the things you can do to avoid sinkholes is when they're not completely solid, um, I further, you know, you can break into them a little bit and add more roots in as you're fixing them. So this is the work, and this is why hand poured fixed candles cost more money because I'm constantly working the candles as I make them. So, um, and now my daughter is texting me. Ricky, do you have your phone? Uh-oh, well, it's a good thing I'm cutting that wick. Cause I'm making a mess. The heat gun here being your best friend, I will blow that back down into the candle and that part of the wick is not going to make it on the candle at all. But I must text my child back and we're working in making votives and what I love about this is I got this table for $20. We take a plastic scraper and scrape it up and clean it up and it cleans up nicely. So these are, um, you know, I, I use some for, for, some for soaps and some for um, 
and I got some washing in the uh, in the basement sink but these are to hold the pre-dyed wax so that we have nice consistent dye lots and things like that for the candles and then, then of course my handy dandy um, thermometer that I stick into the pot to make sure that the wax is the right pouring temperature. So, and then we also have to keep track of which formulation is what candle. One of the fun parts and about candles is sinkage. Um, some of the ways you can avoid candle sinkage, this will happen, is to have your jars be room temperature and your wax be the right temperature when you pour it. So on average, it takes two days to pour these candles because we have to make sure that the wax is settled properly. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm about to roll on down here before my daughter gets off of work. And, um, and yeah, I really messed up that wick, but it, we cut the wicks when we make the candles below the glass, so that's okay. Um, but my daughter is asking me which card to use to order her lunch. Thank God this is her last day at Michael's because she's coming to work for my store. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing today. Candle making, and I gotta call a couple clients because these are a few days late. Um, because candle making, it's like you gotta wait for like the two hour mark to do that second pour. And so now the challenge I have now on the second pour for the purple candles is that we are out of dye and we're gonna make purple. So I'm gonna put those acrylic painting classes to work to mix the dye um, lot. So we'll take, actually we'll be taking the same color that we used for the blue and mixing it with some red until we get that purple exactly right. And the great thing about this table is we just drop a little wax on the table to see if it's the right color. And then um, if it's not, we can add or adjust more dye. So that's interesting and perfect because this table, like I said, this table is huge. I'll step back and show you guys. Um, this is the candle soap station and we'll be moving this to the store. But this thing is huge and it's more like counter height than it is desk height. So it, we bought, I bought it for a desk for my daughter and my youngest, but it really didn't work well. But it has worked excellent for a candle station. So that's all that I have going on today. Yes, a little red, extra blue. Thank you, Nikia, one of our resident artists. We have some real cool artwork that's coming. No, I said Nakia, the la the girl that makes the plaques and the statues and stuff. We're going to have one of a kind artwork from conjurers all over the world. We're going to have Well, yeah, we are going to try to make the silicone mold, but you know, I don't want that statue to get damaged, so I think we're going to research how to make that mold ourselves. So, yeah, we're going to have all kinds of great stuff going on. We had a planning meeting today ordering different stuff store fixtures and stuff like that got the pos system ready so pretty excited all right y'all have a nice day i'm gonna go here and um start to cut up this dye for the purple candles we have to the purple candle dye we have to make this should be fun i'll let y'all know how it turns out